All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the latest 49er news and rumors here on the 49ers Report. And there's a lot of juicy and good stuff to go ahead and jump into. The Niners have always given us, I think I'm going to give credit where credit is due. They've been very interesting, very relevant, and some good stuff and some bad stuff. We'll start with how about the bad, and that is D4. You remember him? You, like, remember him? He last year played 22% of the snaps and then was out, was injured this year, basically never played. Well, he's not coming back. So he officially is done for the year. He's going to miss the rest of 2020. Head coach Kyle Shanahan told the media in a Zoom press conference yesterday. He's been dealing with that lingering back injury, and it just has not been able to get better. There are questions about his long-term future as well, but right now there is just no way that he's going to be able to suit up this year in a 49er uniform, even if they went on a deep postseason run. He's been on IR, and he is mostly going ahead and staying on IR. And even though this is a blow to San Francisco because a healthy D4 is a great player, the Niners the past two years really have not seen a healthy D4. They've tried, they've tried, he's rehabbed, he's rehabbed, and yet here we are still unable to get back out on the football field. He's a free agent after this year. He's costing them $14 million right now, but it looks like 99% chance they will just let him walk in free agency, not re-sign him, and try and move on at the defensive end position. Drop a like right now if you guys think they should move on from D4. Again, I like D4. I think he'd be a great player if he could stay healthy. He was a great player when healthy, but unable to basically played in one game this year which says you know come on you gotta play more than just one game and just the the future outlook of d4 seems to be not in a 49er uniform even though again great player i think if he can get healthy in 2021 someone else can sign him move on with his career still be a dominant pass rusher just not in san francisco who again you gotta go back to last year even last year, he didn't play a lot. Like I said, 22% of all defensive snaps, D Ford was in there as he dealt with lower body injuries. And it just kind of goes to show that even though the Niners are getting healthy right now, which has been very, very good, they've been unable to get fully healthy and still have had a lot of lingering injuries as well. And D Ford is one of those guys that officially is done for the year. Kyle Shannon was also asked about two other players you've not seen play this year. Weston Richburger tore that patella attendant last year. He will not be returning anytime soon. And Ronald Blair, who tore his ACL right around this time last year, sometime in November of 20, uh, was it? Yeah, I guess so 2019, he will not be returning either. So three guys we've not seen play at all this year besides the one game for D4. Looks like none of them are going to be out there in a 49er uniform at any uh, point in the near future and possibly going into the 2021 season. So we start with the bad news. It's not all entirely bad. We'll get to some good news here in one second, but make sure you guys are subscribed to the 49ers report because it's what we did. We update you guys, right? If you don't you have to sit down and watch every single press conference and every single game, you just want the latest 49er news and rumors, we have you guys covered here on the 49ers report. Don't forget to turn your notification bell on as well that way it notifies you when we go live on thursday nights like we do basically every single week so as i said started off with the bad news and really the rest of the show we're gonna have a lot of good news so far with the 49ers from an injury standpoint they have gotten very very healthy over the past couple of weeks and that is good news not only for this week not only good news not only for these players but good news projecting forward for the chances of the 49ers making a deep playoff push so a couple of players who have missed the past couple of weeks on the covid reserve list of course, Brandon Ayuk, TJ Jones, and Jordan Willis. All of them have been activated off of the COVID-19 list. They've had enough negative tests in a row due to either being positive or contact tracing, and they are going to go ahead and play on Sunday. The big name there, obviously, Brandon Ayuk. The fact they're going to get Brandon Ayuk back already with Debo Samuel playing great last week, like a buck 50 through the year. He was dominant against the LA Rams. It means the 49er offense, minus George Kittle, is basically all back. Like They're basically all there. And Ayuk has had, honestly, a great past couple of games. The COVID reserve list was brutal because he was just starting to go ahead and peak and play a lot better football. His rookie year has gone a lot of the way I expected to. Nothing spectacular, but still very, very good where he would start off slow and then come on late. He's definitely been coming on a lot later here than Debo Samuel did. But like I said, with Ayuk back there, and of course, Debo Samuel coming back last week, this is essentially the starting wide receiver group we thought we'd see all year long. I mean, this is what we thought week one, day one, game one. You'd have Debo at the one, Ayuk at the two, and Bourne over there at the three. And now guess what? They finally have it. And they have it against a very good defense in the Buffalo Bills. Like, this is a very good matchup in terms of just a viewership standpoint, but a very tricky matchup for San Francisco. Now, we said that about the Rams last week. The Niners dominated the Rams. Really, I mean, technically they did. It was a lot closer than we wanted, but it, it really played well. And even though... You have a Bills team that is playing great football, best Bills team we've seen in a very, very long time, first in the AFC East. The fact that the weapons are all there. I mean, everyone minus Kittle and Garoppolo, we'll talk about them in a second, are going to be ready to go. And so the Niners have a very, very good chance to go ahead and play in Arizona, for one, but host the Bills and try to go ahead and get a big win on Sunday. If they do 6-6, six and six, 
those playoff chances skyrocket, a real good chance to sneak in as a wild card. Now, with that being said, I'm very confident about this game. We have a great promo running right now with our friends at BetUS. We talked about this the past couple of days. I mean, this is crazy. So right now, if you go to chatsports.com forward slash 49bet and you put down a $100 deposit, first time guy, want to bet on the 49ers, put $100 down, use our promo code Niners125, we will send you a George Kittle jersey. Not even kidding. We will legit send you a George Kittle jersey. So again, all you got to do, chatsports.com slash 49bet. That's important. Got to use our link. And then, of course, use our promo code Niners125. As long as you put $100 or more down, we will send you this George Kittle jersey. You see the red one here. Or if you want the Bosa one, the Bosa one as well. So either the red Kittle or the red Bosa, both can be yours. All you got to do, again, is use the link that we showed you, but also email us. So use the link, chatsports.com, forward slash 49 bet. Use the promo code. And then after you put your $100 down, use this email, 49ers at chatsports.com, or excuse me, 49ers at chatsports to go ahead and redeem your jersey. We're the ones sending you the jersey. So you got to email us to tell us that, hey, I signed up, I'm going deposit, and then we can confirm and send you the jersey. So great deal if you guys want to jump in on sports betting. You can bet on them, get the $100 deposit bonus, 125% deposit bonus, and the jersey as well. Okay, speaking of George Kittle, he looks like he's going to return soon. Now, not this week. I mean, he was very adamant, not this week. But George Kittle, of course, has been dealing with that high ankle sprain since November 1st. And he was talking to the media about potentially returning in two weeks or even next week. I mean, he's feeling very, very good. So listen to what Kittle said on his potential return in 2020. Quote, they said eight weeks. I said six. And I'm excited. These last couple of days have definitely progressed forward and made me very optimistic about returning to the field of play. We'd later on go to say that looking at week 14, possibly week 15, to have one of the best tight ends in the National Football League back out onto the field for the San Francisco 49ers. He's missed a lot of games, again, going back to November 1st, almost a full month, more than a full month up to this point. But if they can get him back on the football field and get him back healthy, a huge addition to the Niner offense. But wait, like an infomercial, there's more. It looks like Jimmy Garoppolo potentially could be returning in 2020 as well. We hinted about this weeks ago where he said, maybe, just maybe, he could come back for the final game of the season, maybe even in the postseason. Well, head coach Kyle Shanahan, Met with the media, like I said, via Zoom, and was very optimistic about not just Kittle, but also Jimmy Garoppolo and saying that he thinks Garoppolo could play the final two, the final game of the year. He was not 100% sure, but he really provided a lot of good insight in terms of the fact that they are expecting Garoppolo to go ahead and be back. Here was Kyle Shanahan on Jimmy G. Quote, I'm holding on hope for Jimmy the last couple of weeks. Same for Kittle, whether it's two games, one game, or None. Now, the or none, I think, protects him in case there was a setback to where you couldn't have Jimmy Garoppolo come back and play. And then you say, Thomas, you said he said so. And then it's like, well, he did. But he also said potentially not. But I think there's a very good chance those final two division games that, of course, they're going to be playing at Arizona and then Seattle are places that where you could see not just George Kittle, but maybe even Jimmy Garoppolo back. I will say this. Even if Mullins is falling out, and Kyle Shanahan has been asked about this. Let's say Mullins beats the Bills, beats the Washington, and beats uh, and beats uh, the, the uh, Dallas week the Cowboys in week 15, excuse me, I still think they would put Garoppolo in there if he is healthy because I think Kyle Shanahan believes in Garoppolo long-term in terms of a playoff run in big games because he's proven to be a big game quarterback or at least was last year more than Nick Mullins. So I would assume that even if Mullins is playing well, they would go ahead and insert Jimmy Garoppolo when healthy. But again, week 16, week 17 for Jimmy Garoppolo, week 14, week 15 for George Kittle. If I had to bet money on it, I'd say 15 for Kittle, and I would say 17 for Jimmy Garoppolo. But the good news is, all around, looks like they're going to come back before the postseason if there is a postseason run. Which one do you guys miss more? Like, do you miss Jimmy or do you miss George? Because, I mean, you can make arguments for both. If you're not a, if you're not a Garoppolo fan, then you would say Kittle. But if you like Jimmy Garoppolo, maybe Garoppolo. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm torn on both. Can, can the answer be both? I'd like it to be both. Let me know what you guys think. Type G down below for Jimmy G. Type K down below for George Kittle. Okay, final bit of news here on the 49ers report for today. We've mentioned many times that they moved to Arizona officially. Well, we got some insight on how the, uh, the practices and the games will look in Arizona. As Kyle Shanahan says, they've officially settled there. They're going to be there the next two and a half to three weeks. And he gave them high praise. I mean, first off, shout out to the Cardinals. The fact that they've opened up their doors for the 49ers to go ahead and practice in their training camp facility. And then, of course, play at their actual NFL stadium. It's, it's been top-notch. And Kyle Shanahan was very grateful and very thankful and very uh, impressed with what he's seen from the hospitality of the Arizona Cardinals. He said this, kind of give you some insight on what they're dealing with. Quote, for practicing with the Cardinals at training camp, I believe it's the Renaissance Hotel. I'm not sure, but wherever they did training camp, that's where our setup is. 
I know we're going to be able to use the stadium here and there for some things too. So it's all close in proximity. So you get a look at that. Hey, you get the training camp facility, you get different the practice facility. People are wondering if they're going to mix and match with the Cardinals. No, they're separate. They got separate fields and they're going to be good to go. Shanahan went on to say, quote, there's a good setup there and the Cardinals have been awesome with us. Everyone out there has been really awesome with us. And I do believe we have a really good setup there to make the best of it. That's where we'll play our games too. So again, is this the ideal situation? No, they much rather be in San Francisco where their houses are, where their actual facilities are, where my stadium is, but it's what they have to deal with. And the hope is there are no lingering effects of having in home game away at the Cardinal stadium. You'll see the first one, obviously Monday night against the Buffalo Bills while playing in Arizona. Do you think they'll have any sort of negative side effects? I don't think so. I mean, they're all professionals, right? And COVID's always been weird this year, and so people are used to it. Will there be any negative side effects? Type wide and below for yes. Type N down below for no. I want to hear what you guys think on this topic because I don't think it'd be a big deal, but it is interesting. you got to move all the way over there and, uh, you know, change things up a little bit. That's what the Niners are going ahead and doing.